All right, how's everybody doing? So um, the overall theme of this channel, if I could, uh, if I could say I have one, is getting into 35 millimeter photography on a budget with good high quality equipment. And in terms of SLR systems, um, I have been promoting a couple of systems uh, which I think represent a really good bargain for your money. The first one I started talking about was a Nichromat based pre-AI Nikon system. Um, and Nichromats are still reasonably affordable. Uh, Nikon lenses, I think, have been going up in price in the recent years. I first started talking about these things online a few years ago when I very first started this channel. Um, and um, it, it may not be as budget friendly as it once was, um, but um, I, a pre-AI um, uh, Nikon system uh, based on a Nikromat is still a viable option. Um, another option that I've been talking a lot about and which I'm still planning to continue talking about is a Konica system based on the auto reflex cameras and the Hexanon lenses. Uh, this remains one of the best deals out there in my opinion in the 35 millimeter SLR systems. If you don't mind spending a little bit of extra time looking for your equipment because Konica wasn't as popular as Canon, um, Nikon, Pentax, uh, but they were a major player and they made top quality stuff and the auto reflex cameras and Hexanon lenses were absolutely top notch. Uh, so I've spent some time talking about the, this system as well. Um, I recently, well, before I talk about the M42, um, there are two other systems that I used to collect but I'm not currently collecting so I can't show anything to you. Uh, which I would consider good, viable uh, bar bargain options for 35 millimeter systems today. And that would be Canon FD. My recommendation would be to get an FTB camera. I think the FTB is one of the best, most reliable cameras Canon ever made, period. Um, and also a Minolta uh, system, Minolta based on the, uh, the SRT uh, series SLRs. Uh, which likewise, you know, built like a tank, um, uh, battery powers the light meter only, um, uh, exceptional quality, and the, the lenses are very affordable. The Canon FD and Minolta um, Rokor MC and MD series lenses, very affordable. Um, and so that's all, th those are also good budget options. The budget option I want to talk about today is M42. And so the question in my mind was, um, was there really a good budget option available for M42? I, I, I have sort of had the, the impression that the mirrorless crowd had bid up the prices of all the good M42 lenses such that M42 was no longer a viable system for 35 millimeter photography, at least not, I mean, for, for budget, again, if you're on a budget. I mean, it, it's certainly a viable system, but um, uh, is it, can, you know, can you get a high quality system on a budget? Um, then I discovered this little thing here, uh, the Ricoh Singlex TLS, which is based on, uh, originally based on the Chinon design, the Chinon Flex um, camera, and um, it was licensed to at, at least one other company. I'm pretty sure it was licensed to Cosina. And so this basic camera design was manufactured by Chinon, Ricoh, and Cosina from the late 60s into the early 70s, uh, perhaps beyond. I'm not sure how late these cameras were made. Um, but this was, as far as I can tell, this was sort of the, um, the budget SLR of uh, the late 60s and early 70s if you wanted to get into 35 millimeter um, with a, um, a, a fully featured system on a budget. Um, I think this, the, this design camera was, was, um, was your number one option back then for, uh, for that. Um, so I picked this thing up and I thought, well, what, what's, you know, are there, are there good um, lenses available? And when I say good, I don't necessarily mean, you know, Nikkor or, or uh, Super Tacomar quality, um, but something decent that you can have fun with. You know, can you have fun with M42 on a budget? Um, I'm assuming that, you know, given the budget restrictions, you're not going to be able to get the um, uh, Pentax Super Tacomars. Those have been bid up, most of, not all of them, but most of those have been bid up. Um, in terms of prices. Likewise, anything that says Carl Zeiss Yenna on it, uh, that's going to be um, um, a little, little pricey. But, so, you know, what, what's left? Can, can you get a, a nice, fun 35mm uh, system based on M42 uh, within a budget? And I, th I think the answer is yes. I mean, let me show you what I've got. Let me, this is what I've put together in a fairly short period of time uh, and fairly inexpensively. So, for for standard lenses, I picked up a, um, this is a Pentacon 
50 millimeter f 1.8 it kind of gets mixed reviews on the on the on the collector blogs if you look at it but I'm, I'm pretty happy with it uh, I haven't done a whole lot of shooting with it I've only put what like I think I've shot a single like one roll of film um, it's neat because the, the neat feature on this lens is the close focus ability it focuses down to where is it where are we there it is um, you know, 33 um, centimeters uh, which is pretty doggone close um, so that's kind of neat uh, and it's very compact it's a nice compact lens 40 49 millimeter filter thread filter thread size um, and these things are just dirt cheap they're, they're not hard to find and they're not uh, they're not expensive um, and they're sharp enough you know I'm not saying it's super tack quality but it's um, it's I mean nothing wrong with it as far as I again as far as I can tell having pulled you know having shot all of one roll of film with this thing so far um, likewise here's another um, absolute classic that belongs in any budget M42 collection is the legendary Helios 44. Uh, this is a preset version, um, 58 millimeter f2. Uh, it's got a 49 millimeter uh, filter thread size. Uh, I'm not sure how many. It's got, it's got quite a few aperture blades. How many aperture blades are in this thing? I didn't even I didn't count. I forgot. Um, but it's it's more than six. This one this one only has six aperture aperture blades. Um, this one has quite a few more than that um, and I've been very favorably impressed I put a few rolls of film through it uh, and um, I've been very very happy with the results so far um, I believe that arsenal marker that fact or that marker right there indicates manufactured by KMZ um, I'd have to look that up to be sure but I think that's right um, and uh, I've, I've, fun focal length uh, decently fast lens at f f2 and um, you know, I, I, I recommend it. I've, I've had fun with this lens. Um, wide angle tends to be a little pricey. The only, the widest angle I've got so far is a, um, is this Petri 35 millimeter f2.8. Um, and my goal is putting together a system that does not rely too much on third party lenses. Although, when you talk about the the second tier manufacturers uh, of Japan of the 1960s, what's really the difference between a third party lens and an OEM lens from a company like Petri? Not that I'm poo pooing or putting down Petri. Uh, Petri was a budget brand. Um, they made lenses in M42. Apparently, they also had their own um, uh, bayonet mount for a while, and then went back to M42. I'm, I'm not, that's, there's only so much information you can find online about these old budget brands. Um, but I wanted to stick to to something that I could you know say with a straight face was not an oh it was was not an aftermarket lens, um, although I, I don't, there, there there are certain aftermarket companies of the period uh, do have cult followings. I'm thinking of uh, Tamioka and Komine, um and perhaps some, uh, perhaps a few others um, tend to have cult followings amongst M42 collectors. Um, apparently Petri does not because this thing is dirt cheap um, and. Um, I got some neat results with it. I'm not. I'm not going to say it's the sharpest thing I've ever shot, but um, I opened it up wide open and uh, got some interesting bouquet background um, images with it. And um, I'm looking forward to continuing to experiment with this lens. I think I put maybe two, two, three rolls of film through uh, with this. I think two. Um, that's kind of neat. Um, likewise, the other Japanese budget brand lens I've got right here is a. A Chin and Flex, Chin and Flex Auto Reflex, 200 millimeter f 3.5. 200 millimeter tends to be a rather affordable focal length. There's a lot of good 200 millimeter lenses out there in, in a variety of mounts uh, for not too much money. This one caught my eye because of the maximum aperture of 3.5. Also, it was made by Chin and obviously for the Chin and Flex camera line, which was their M42. Um, camera which looked you know, virtually identical to this um, so there was a there was a line of lenses made by Chinon for this camera um, in the I'm assuming in the late 60s early 70s again there's not a whole lot of information available about these lenses I just said well it's a, I mean it's it, it qualifies as OEM so sure why not I'll take a, I'll take a chance on it um, I've been very happy with with the results I've seen on this lens so far uh, again I think I put one or two rolls of film with it um, uh, but you know, so far so good um, again I'm, I'm not and, and my standard I'm not I'm not making the claim that these lenses are anywhere near the quality of a Nikkor or a Takamar um, my question is can I put together an M42 system with decent optics um, and enjoy it and have some fun and that's kind of my goal 
and uh, so far so good. Um, another uh, candidate or another entry in the uh, in the system here. I've got a, a Pentacon 2.8 135. Uh, apparently, there were two versions of the Pentacon 135 f 2.8. The early one was a preset lens which had like 15 aperture blades or something, and that's that that is supposedly is the more collectible one. This is the later version, uh, which is supposedly less collectible, but um, it's got a built-in lens hood. It's multi-coated. And um, I like the results I've had with it so far. Again, only one or two rolls of film I've shot with this thing so far. Um, but again, the, these, these lenses are just not expensive. Everything I've showed you uh, uh, here so far, not, um, not expensive in, in the least. Um, a lot of the, um, well, you know, the East German stuff that tends to be pricey is either uh, Meyer Optic, Meyer, how do you say the last name, Meyer Optic Gerlitz, or um, uh, or Carl Zeiss Jena. The stuff that's simply branded Pentacon tends to be a little more affordable. Um, and this, this 135 simply uh, certainly was, was not expensive at all. It's in lovely condition. Um, and uh, let's see, what I, oh, I found um, uh, it can be a hassle, some of these old legacy systems, uh, finding body caps and rear lens caps, but for M42, not so much. I searched uh, M42 body cap or rear cap on Amazon and I found uh, that these are um, it's a set of these things. This is plastic, uh, but so what? Uh, it works. It screws on and it works just fine. It's a nice plastic body cap um, and it came in a package with um, some rear caps. I think was this one? Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember. No, I think it was a, here. Might have been this one. I can't remember. Anyway, so if you if you go on Amazon, you can find um, you know, remanufactured uh, body caps and um, and rear lens caps for M42. I can't remember this this one. You go whatever. Who cares? Um, they fit uh, and they're functional, and that's that's all that really matters. Uh, and that's here we go. Yeah, this is it. this is what I found. This is one of the this is one of the Amazon ones. Um, and it's fine. You know, it, it works. Ain't nothing fancy, ain't nothing pretty, but it works. Um, and it, it and like, <laughs> you know, try finding original rear cap and body caps for Konica. <laughs> that, that's a hassle, and nobody's nobody's remanu remanufacturing those things. Um, that I know of. If, if you if you know differently, please post a comment. Uh, so so far so good. Um, again, I've only shot maybe one or two rolls of film with each of those lenses. I'll put links below to the images I've shot. Um, as I add more, obviously, um, that'll increase depending upon when you're seeing this video. Um, and um, I am guardedly optimistic, right? Well, not guardedly. I'm, I'm optimistic. I, I'm, I've, I'm having fun putting together a, a neat M42 uh, system uh, based on the Chin and Flex design here embodied as a Ricoh Singlex TLS. And again, the selling point for me with this camera, all metal, 1960s build quality. And one of my personal favorites, the Copal Square Shutter. The horizontally traveling stainless steel, all mechanical Copal Square Shutter. If your camera, I've said it before, I'll say it again. The Copal Square Shutter was one of the greatest photographic inventions of the 20th century. The shutter is the beating heart of the camera. If you've got a Copal Square Shutter in your camera, at least you know that's one part you don't need to worry about. You've got a very high uh, likelihood that, that the shutter is going to work when you get your camera and that it, it will continue to work for you a good long while into the future. So that's where I'm at with my, uh, my M42 on a shoestring project. Um, again, everything I've showed you here was very inexpensive. I don't remember exact prices for everything, but no, nothing cost $100. Most of these items were well under $100, and I think that's probably a good benchmark for a quote-unquote budget, um, you know, wh whether or not a system is budget. Do you need to spend more than 100 bucks on any given item? Um, if the answer is yes, then I, I'm, I'm going to say that's not really a budget system. But if you can pick up nice, high-quality gear for you know, well under 100 bucks a piece, um, you know, per body or per lens, yeah, that's a decent budget system. And um, uh, I've, I've liked, I've, I like what I've got so far, and I'm going to continue shooting these lenses uh, with this camera. And I will report back to you and, and let you know um, how that's going. And um, um, it's, it's just, it's another option. If you want to get into 35 millimeter uh, on a budget, there are options. And um, 
this is this is one possibility so that's what i got for you today i hope you found this video uh informative or entertaining or a, a combination thereof if so please do like subscribe and check out the links down below thanks now take care bye, -bye.